Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white double strike equipment deck whose goal it is to suit up some of our double striking creatures such as Illuminator Virtuoso or Kellon the Fey Blooded with either Sword of Forge and Frontier or Sword of Once and Future. Depending on the matchup we can use Kellon's Adventure which is Birthright Boon for one and a white search our library for an aura or equipment card reveal it and put it into our hand. So let's say our opponent plays turn one mountain then we probably want to get protection from red and from green from a Sword of Forge and Frontier. If our opponent played a turn one Swamp, then a Sword of Once and Future might be better, giving us protection from black and from blue. Both swords also give plus two plus two. And then if we manage to hit the opponent with an equipped creature, in the case of Forge and Frontier, we get to exile the top two cards of our library, and we may play those cards this turn, and we may play an additional land this turn. So the idea with these swords is that if we suit up a double striking creature, they get to hit the opponent twice. So we also get to enable the sword's ability twice. So in this case, exile four cards, play two extra lands and play those exiled cards until end of turn. And then the sword of once and future will let us surveil two if we hit the opponent. And then we may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value two or less from our graveyard without paying its mana cost and then exile it afterwards. So that's why we see so many cheap instants and sorceries in this deck to synergize with sword of once and future and also important to point out is that we can use Kellen's adventure with the blue black swords ability if we manage to put it in our graveyard or if it was already in our graveyard to begin with so that also lets us search up an extra equipment or an aura which includes our three copies of ossification so in certain spots we don't need another sword but we do need a bit of interaction and then getting this aura to exile an opposing creature or planeswalker can come in handy plenty of basic lands to enchant and then the rest of our deck, as we mentioned, has lots of cheap instants and sorceries to get back with Sword of Once and Future. Also lots of removal spells mostly, because our deck can be pretty slow to get going. We need to first search up a sword, play the sword for 3 mana and then equip it for 2, so that takes a lot of time and effort. So in the meantime, if our opponent's off to a quick start, we're going to be dead. So it's good to have lots of cheap removal, including 4 copies of Play With Fire, four copies of the new Torch the Tower, which also is Bargain, which we can potentially enable by sacrificing a token from Aral's reinforcements, and in that case we get to deal three damage as opposed to two, and then we could also scry one if we bargained, and then if a permanent dealt damage by Torch the Tower would die, it gets exiled instead, so that can also be relevant against opposing Graveyard Recursion. And then at 2 mana we also have the full set of a Lightning Strike as another burn spell dealing 3 damage. So no matter the board state, if we have a Lightning Strike in the graveyard and we hit the opponent with a Sword of Once and Future, we can just get back a burn spell and point it at the opponent's face. But if we can use it as removal, of course, even better. And then Aral's Reinforcements, making a pair of 1-1 one -one tokens, is pretty nice since it gives us multiple bodies to equip with our various swords. So if the opponent does have a bunch of spot removal, they'll eventually run out and we'll get to connect with one of our tokens, hopefully. And then once in the graveyard, we can also get it back with Sword of Once and Future, potentially giving us some 1-1s one -ones on defense as we keep hitting the opponent with our Double Striker. And then we mentioned Ossification to go with Kellen. And then Virtuoso as another double striking creature can also potentially pick up additional counters with Connive, but we don't actually have any pump spells to go with the Virtuoso. Part of that is that if I would like to play a red pump spell, like the new Monstrous Rage, which can also give a monster roll, which is pretty synergistic with Kellen, since it also counts as an aura to pump up the rest of our team. That could be pretty awkward if we have, let's say, a Sword of Forge and Frontier on our Virtuoso, because then it has protection from red, and we can't actually target it with our red pump spells. So only white pump spells would still work, and those tend to be more defensive in nature, as opposed to tricks that work well with an attacking double strike creature. So there are definitely a lot of ways to approach this deck, but I think having cheap removal to then hopefully land a double striking creature is more important than having tricks that are good once we actually already have a creature equipped equipped and attacking. And then we also have four copies of the new Heart Flame Duelist, a 2-mana 3-1, saying instant and sorcery spells we control have a lifelink, which is very nice with all the burn spells we discussed. Turning a Lightning Strike into a Lightning Helix, essentially, can be very useful when facing those aggressive decks. And then the Duelist also has an adventure, Heart Flame Slash for 2 and a red, deals 3 damage to any target at instant speed. So that's also additional removal. We can maybe wait to use the adventure first and then play the creature, or we can simply run out to 3-1, especially if we draw multiple 
multiples, it can work out better if we play the 3-1 and then play our 3 mana burn spell that also gains 3 life. So the sequencing can be a bit awkward if you only have the one duelist, since you would prefer to play the creature and then the adventure, but if you want to play the adventure, then uh, you'll have to play that one first. And then Kellen, as we mentioned, can also pump the rest of our team, which also has more synergy with all the 1-1 tokens from reinforcements. So if we have a sword equipped to Kellen, it will give our other creatures plus 1 plus 0, and that only increases the more swords we put on Kellen. And it's incredibly fun if we manage to put both swords on a single double strike creature, and that's usually enough to just end the game in one attack. And then our mana base also has an important addition, a Restless Bivouac can turn into a 2-2 creature for just 3 mana, and when it attacks we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a target creature we control, so kind of like a mini Raging Ravine, but it also has a flexibility of putting the counter elsewhere, so that includes our double striking creatures, which are of course great recipients for extra power and toughness. And then we've got the Channel Lanes, Crucible to make a pair of 1-1s, and Iganjo to deal 4 damage and then plenty of basics to make sure we have a functional ossification. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is missing a creature, although strangely enough this could work out against, let's say, a red aggro deck where we've got early removal, protection from red, and then as soon as we find a creature we're in the clear. So I'll give this a shot. Turn one mountain, Kumano, so this is the matchup to keep this hand. Exiling a creature with Torch the Tower, also relevant against Squee or even a Phoenix Chick. Although sadly Swiss Spear picks up a counter, so we can't kill it with our two damage. So we're off to a pretty good start here from the mono red deck, double Kumano and a Swiss Spear. We're down to 15. And we've only played a land. So just gonna a lightning strike right now before they can enable prowess. We'll take another two from a transformed Kumano, but then we can kill their two twos pretty easily. Phoenix Chick with counter will be exiling. And our opponent is on empty. Let's pass a turn here. Opponent's gonna attack, no Phoenix check to get back. Kill Etching, see if they have a pump spell maybe, they don't. And then... I think I hang on to Torch the Tower. Just kill Etching. Again in case Squee shows up. So we fall to 8, opponent could still have a 3 damage burn spell in hand. And we still need to find a creature. So likely torching the Phoenix Chick. Still no creature. If we can find Duelist to gain life, that would also be great. Another sword. Well, as soon as we find something to equip, we're in business. Kellen? Well, I think uh, I'm just gonna play it since there's no point in uh, using the adventure when we have both swords already. And it's not like ossification is going to make a huge difference. Now our opponent's likely to kill Kellen in response to me equipping it. So I think we just pass with Lightning Strike up to kill a potential haste creature after they kill Kellen. And it's going to be a frenzy designed to take out Shieldred. Yep. Okay. So finding a token maker could actually be best since that can provide multiple bodies to equip. Mishra's Foundry, something we'll have to Lightning Strike. And speak of a token maker. Once again, probably just pass without equipping. So we can kill Mishra's Foundry if that animates. Only drawback is a potential uh, end the festivities. Dealing one to all my tokens, that would be unfortunate. Lightning Strike puts me to five. Foundry activates. 
and we'll be striking it. Okay, do we finally get to equip? We'll start with a red-green sword for protection. And then if we can find a duelist for lifelink, we can be in the clear. Okay, and then it's safe to equip the same token twice. At the very least, get back another uh, reinforcement, so the other one one's also safe to attack. We'll be covered against a potential haste creature. And then how to stack these... Probably want to surveil and then use the red greens ability. Okay, so Kellen can go to the graveyard since I can use the adventure. And Virtuoso will keep on top so I can maybe play it if I exile a land as well. And then for now, I imagine making tokens is best. Found a land, so I can actually play Virtuoso. So next turn we can suit that up. There's Quee. Chump Squee, E to 1 1. And then next turn with another Sword of Forge and Frontier, we should be in business. Do they actually have the pump spell? Okay, Monstrous Rage. So they get to trample for a little bit. Put us to two. And now we don't have a double striker to suit up. But I can play another Sword of Forge and Frontier. And then let's see, we have seven. Plus two is nine. And then I'll be able to get back a Lightning Strike 12. And then as long as I exile a land with two sword triggers, We'll be able to cast another Lightning Strike from hand, so that should be game over. So, probably fine to Surveil first. And now a Lightning Strike in the Graveyard. Put our opponent to two. Maybe going for a play with fire was even safer, that way I could have uh, scried since two damage was enough, and there's a duelist which also could have gained life back. Alright, very close game here against Monorad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand is missing any sort of sword or double strike creature, but we have burn spells plus duelist, so if we're up against, let's say, Monorad aggro, this hand could work out despite Battlefield Forge costing me some life. Give it a shot. Turn one planes instead. So we don't have protection from white to give to our creatures. I did consider flying equipment to potentially fly over some tokens. Opponent on blue-white soldiers, perhaps. And speaking of tokens, I guess we'll play reinforcements. Probably have to try and get value from our adventure instead of just playing duelist as a 3-1 which is going to have a hard time attacking. So I'm happy to trade for the opponent's creatures, since we don't have any swords to put on our tokens. Veteran is going to pump their team, so now we'll just take four. And then we'll use Heart Flame Slash to kill Veteran as soon as we get the chance. Can still provide value from the graveyard, so finding Torch the Tower to exile it would actually be better. Ossification, I guess, also a clean answer, although not very mana efficient here. So maybe I still keep up the Duelist's ability. And then killing Veteran at instant speed maybe lets me trade off my tokens for theirs. Hmm, interesting. Opponents attacking with a Veteran, maybe implying a Wandering Emperor. I'll start by trying to kill Veteran, because if they have a counter spell, then I'm not going to want to block their tokens. Alright, that works pretty seamlessly. So we'll try and trade off. That also worked. So by not exiling Veteran, we'll have to worry about a 5-man ability, but we have so much removal that we should be able to keep the opponent's creatures in check. And a Brutal Cathar without exiling any creatures. Okay, so now I can play Duelist 
and keep up my burn spells. Bivouac is also going to be an important part of this matchup, giving us something to close out the game. So our opponent can use a veteran at instant speed, which means if we try and play with fire, they can grow it up to a 3-3, another Brutal Cathar. So now I'll probably play with fire the second Cathar in response to the ability, so we don't lose our duelists. And we still gain two life. And then I'm not even sure if we take the trade if they offer. Opponent doesn't even offer. Okay, so now I have the second duelist we could use. Might want to do it now so it stays daytime. And then I get to add another duelist to the board. They don't seem to have another reinforcement, so I'll attack. Okay, so we've got a bunch of 3 ones that provided value, more removal in hand, and a creature land ready to activate. It is now night time. Animate bivouac. And then probably want to just play this, keep up lightning strike to be safe. Could see an opposing eye gunjo kill one of my creatures. So bivouac probably puts counter on duelist instead of itself. Because I feel like bivouac's going to be more valuable in the long term. And now duelist can potentially attack into a 1-1. It's going to be a soaring city instead, bouncing duelist. Don't really mind. Now I can use the adventure again. So I'm not in a hurry to play this as a 3-1. Frontliner can maybe be exiled by ossification. And yeah, opponent's down to nothing. If I lightning strike now, then we can attack past the opponent's creatures, so that's also maybe worth the efficiency. And then I'm kind of liking bivouac attack. Just try and push as much damage as possible while we can. And then it's not unreasonable to play Duelist, but uh, yeah, the adventure for 3 damage means that even another Lightning Strike could be game in case the board somehow stalls out. But yeah, at this point I'm kind of failing to see how our opponent recovers. Recruitment Officer, I guess, can activate and find reinforcements is the best case scenario. Harbin, just a 3-2. So I can clear two blockers. And then attack and use Duelist for the win. Or we can let the bivouac cross the finish line. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is probably not going to cut it without Kellen or a sword. Also no removal besides the three mana slash. Feels a bit clunky. This we can keep. And then what to get rid of. Tempted to keep all the lanes since we'll need a lot of mana to take full advantage of Kellen. So maybe get rid of one of the removal spells. And then... I guess we don't have a basic for ossification, so that's an easy choice. So turn one bivouac, turn two we can adventure Kellen, get a sword. And blue-black seems appropriate. A ledger shredder. Could also just kill it now before it gets out of hand, which is not unreasonable. Although it's going to be sad if this gets countered. Another Shredder. Okay, top deck sort of the top. So I think we still want to adventure to get another one. And then I can play a tapped lands. Because yeah, there's no realistic scenario where I can already hit the opponent next turn since if I play Kellen now it's still five mana to play an equip. So I might as well 
get another equipment here. And uh, could also get ossification as removal. Even though getting a second sword of once and future is safer in the event of a counter on the first one. But our opponent's been tapping out so far. Now they're going to keep up some mana. So I don't think this is an ossification turn. I think we want to bait out a counterspell on ossification and then play sword afterwards to have that resolve. And then we'll eventually find a creature to equip. We already have two creature lanes that can wear a sword. So this is maybe a bait out a counterspell on Kellen situation, even though it would be nice to resolve. Scatter Ray does exactly that. Okay. Now, of course, double spelling will trigger Ledger Shredder. But uh, not too worried about it. Opponent binning a Hottie Gin, so they might have another one in hand, or they're just looking to find more cantrips. Virtuoso isn't bad either. Says so a time for ossification. I think so. That worked, and they didn't seem to have much of a response. So we'll try the sword that worked. Now, of course, playing Virtuoso first would have the advantage of immediately being able to play sword and equip next turn. But uh, I think just getting this to resolve is key. And then now, opponent played Haughty Jin. If I animate Bivouac, I could still equip it. If they have Fading Hope and Response, that would be a little annoying. So probably just go for Virtuoso, and I'll play a land first, even though Igancho is a pretty decent answer to Hotijin, just on the off chance that they had another Scatter Ray. And then now we can suit up Virtuoso. That worked, and I could still double play with Fire Hotijin if I want to. Okay, so we seem to be in the clear. Opponent's not going to have any way of interacting with Virtuoso other than maybe Soaring City, which is not technically a blue effect. The lands are colorless. Flow of Knowledge is not bad. Can potentially get them back in the game. But they're about to take a lot of damage. Bivouac can also put a counter on our Double Striker. And then... We already have some goodies in the graveyard to get back. Trigger swords. Don't really need another one. Get back a lightning strike. And then if I lightning strike again, opponent takes six. Down to seven. We can put him very low. Probably worth it here. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a sword, but I think we can still keep two threats, some removal, and then hope to find Kellen or a sword at some point. Put on black-white, so getting the blue-black sword might be best here. Alright, we found one. Do I still want to run Virtuoso into a pretty likely removal spell? Yeah, I guess we'll have to at some point. Especially instant speed removal spells are good to get out of the way. Just a Virtue of Loyalty making a knight. Yep, a white deck making lots of tokens can still be annoying since we don't have a protection from white sword in our deck. Take two for now. So then the plan is just to kill their creatures one for one with removal and eventually overpower them with an equipped creature. Missionary 2-3 lifelink. Okay, so could remove some of the opponent's stuff here. Play with fire the token, ossification a 2-3. Or I can just play Sword and then hope to get it going next turn. Could also use the Duelist. So I've got a few options. Playing the Sword is a bit sketchy if they can kill Virtuoso next turn. So I think I like using the Duelist Slash to kill Missionary. Keep Ossification in case a Shield Root shows up and just pass for now. Also want to limit the amount of creatures they have given that Virtue of Loyalty can turn them all into scary threats. So 
So we'll take two. Underdog is next. Okay. So now I can play Sword Keep a Play with Fire, and they were mainly focusing on the white creatures. Adlin, okay. So I can kill the 2 2, eat a token, and then next turn also vacation Adlin. And then we'll actually get to connect with Virtuoso as well. This is going to be sweet. Hit a lightning strike. I think I'll mill duelist at this point. And then lightning strike and go face. And can keep ossification on top. And play with fire face. Okay, don't really care about Underdog as long as we have protection from black. Wandering Emperor, yeah, that's an answer to Virtuoso. Now you've done it. That's off. So next I can play another Virtuoso, equip it. Possible that it was a bit greedy not killing Underdog when we had the chance. But we'll see how this plays out. Also, Vacation can clear another white blocker in case they make a samurai, for instance. Another virtue. And then I can play reinforcements before attacking so we can at least get that back if we connect. Right of Oblivion, my sword, ouch. Okay. That works. Well, at least we'll be able to finish off Wandering Emperor now. Another Virtuoso. So yeah, just attack Wandering Emperor, and then I think just play reinforcements maybe to use up our red mana, which might be a bottleneck. Hmm. And then also Vacation could still be a nice answer to the underdog later. I was not really expecting an answer to my artifact, but yeah, Rite of Oblivion makes sense in a token strategy. A Lord Skitter can make rats, and can also exile stuff from my graveyard, which is relevant if we find another sword. I think now we take the trade. Exile Lord Skitter, and keep up the pressure. Now they can flash back right of Oblivion, sacking the rat token, and uh, potentially free one of their creatures. Let's go with Virtuoso, which applies a bit more pressure here. If they just cast a Virtue of Loyalty, they seem pretty dead on board if we activate the Bivouac. If we top deck a sword, we can play and equip. Eh, opponent gets back Adlin. If I animate Bivouac, attack, put counter on, let's say, Virtuoso, then we've got four, five, six going through, and they're forced to block the 2 2 double striking Virtuoso. Because if they don't, and let's say, block a two powered creature, then they would take four, five, six, seven, eight, and be dead. So yeah, the bivouac also has great synergy with double strike creatures. Could go poorly for a point was sitting on a cut down all along, but I doubt it. And then I can still reinforcements second main. And yeah, our opponent explodes. Having to chump with Adlin here is not a way to win. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. I've got early removal. Kellen to find our swords. So we'll see what we're up against to decide which sword to get. Hopefully it's not mono white. 
because we don't have any protection from white in our deck. For now, keep a play with fire. Opponents turn one mountain into Swiss spear. I'll happily take that out. So we know which sword to get now. Hopefully we don't have to tap Battlefield Forge for white mana too often. Because it does hurt. We don't have any two mana creatures, so won't be able to necessarily equip sword on turn four already. And double Swift Spear is quite scary. And we found another sword. Yeah, given that the sequencing is kind of off here, I think I need to lightning strike one of the opponent's creatures. Question is whether I do it now or wait in case a squee shows up. In case they have two burn spells, I could get punished by prowess, but if they have two burn spells at instant speed here, we might be in trouble regardless. Because then we'll never get to suit up one of our creatures. Alright, Godric, we can now a lightning strike. And then next turn could get ossification. And now with an extra white source I could play it. And that's definitely the most efficient use of my mana. Although that doesn't let me connect with Kellen next turn. But I have to be realistic, our opponent's gonna have some removal for it. So let's make sure not to trust the auto-tapper. I guess another option was to channel Crucible end of turn, hope to draw another land, and then we can play Sword Equip. Seems a bit ambitious. Mm, they're squee, so they had multiple scary three drops. Alright, we're definitely on the back foot. Virtuoso isn't bad. So maybe this turn I just deploy a pair of double striking creatures, hope that one survives. And they make for pretty decent blockers as well. And then next turn we can play Sword Equip, hopefully. They're incentivized to kill my creatures so they can keep attacking. Adversary with Kicker here. Luckily doesn't have any burn spells to get back, so just a 3-3 haste. And they're gonna find out that attacking with a 3-3 does not work here, since we could double block and kill it with first strike damage. So multiple first strike creatures also quite nice on defense. So yeah, opponent just has to pass, and now the coast is clear for Sword of Forge and Frontier. And I think we have to go for it here. Maybe suit up Virtuoso, keep the larger creature on defense. And then hope to exile a couple of lands and some burn spells. Okay, can we get a land here? We can, but sadly only a plane, so not the best set of hits. Just got us a planes. And we could easily die on the way back here. Foundry activates. Turn the team sideways. And I guess we'll block Squee. Monstrous Rage, ouch. Yeah, I think that kills us. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then Trample for lethal. Yeah, our uh, Virtuoso betrayed us. Just needed to find a red source to cast that Torture Tower and we would have been fine. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we're missing a red mana. Can we still keep? I think it's reasonable, we've got multiple spells we can cast. Any third land lets me play a Sword of Once and Future, which is quite powerful with our Virtuoso. And then Kellen can also use its adventure to potentially get the missing sword. Opponent on a multicolor deck. Could be the new five-color Invasion of Alara deck. Looks like it's, yep, Virtue killing Virtuoso, unfortunately, but we found our red mana. We don't have protection from white to protect against Leyline Binding, so that's the main removal we're worried about. Unlikely for them to have another Virtue of Persistence they can cast when they had to use Myrix as their black source. So I think just playing Kellen is reasonable, since that will apply the most pressure once we suit it up. Opponent uses Herd Migration to maybe get a Swamp. But with a Mirex, they actually won't be able to cast Invasion of Alara on curve, since it will only make colorless mana. 
So not really a land I recommend in the Invasion of Alara deck. But now they could certainly kill Kellen before I get to connect with Sword of Once and Future. And that also includes a Leyline Binding next turn on the sword itself. So we're probably better off just playing another Double Striker here. And then hope to get to a point where we can play the sword and equip in the same turn. Ossification is not what we needed. Step on attack. And then could use the Duelist to deal 3 damage. Could just play Reinforcements or we can play Sword and then next turn try to suit up one of our Double Strikers. But if our opponent's patient and holds on to a Leyline Binding, they can exile the creature we try and equip. Although maybe we'll have 4 mana to equip two creatures in the same turn. Or they can just get rid of the Sword itself. Opponent does nothing. Okay. And we found a land. So step one, probably equip Virtuoso, which is good enough if it works. Alright, so our opponent's going to wait until we attack to Leyline Binding, either Sword or Virtuoso. So no point in doing anything else. Can uh, play a land, attack, and then at least threaten to Lightning Strike, so we can get it back with uh, Sword's ability. Poseju even. Yeah, that's a line I didn't play my version, but they had as a one-off there. It's too bad, so we lose our equipment. But we get to find a land in return. So our opponent takes a bunch of damage still, down to 9. Now we're potentially at a point where we want to fire off our burn spells. If our opponent plays the Cemetery Desecrator, they could still maybe stabilize next turn, even though Ossification can exile it. So let's just play Reinforcements then. And put ourselves in a position to close out the game with our Burn Spells next turn. Hope to dodge Invasion of Alara, but with Mirex, they would need an untapped land. Alright, get to attack. And uh, unless they've got more life gain from herd migration, we can burn them out. And we've got two instant speed burn spells. So it looks like we got there. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And yeah, we've got Kellen, a couple tokens, and one sword already. A bit light on removal. So that could be a problem if our opponent's off to a quick start since it does take a while to set up our swords. And we're also missing a basic line in case we want to get ossification. Opponent on red aggro. Okay, so at least the uh, saving grace is that we were on the play. So I can get reinforcements going. And then I might just play sword on three and wait on getting the red-green sword until later. Could also play Kellen for just 3 mana. Okay, so our opponent is actually red-green after all. So that probably buys me more time to get the red-green sword going. For now I can attack. And then we play blue-black sword. When we have a play with fire in hand to maybe clear a path, that could work, although red-green's gonna present some large creatures. And then I guess I could still get an ossification, remove their blocker, but then we're not equipping a creature. Yeah, tough call. I think still going for sword makes sense. Pretty mana efficient. The alternative was get a red-green sword, keep up play with fire for etching, which also could have worked. But now we put our opponent on the back foot where we can threaten to clear a blocker and then Get the ball rolling on the sword, but yeah, Samut's great synergy with etching. Luckily found a Torch the Tower, so that can kill Samut. After bargaining. And 
than Virtuoso. I don't really need when I have double Kellen. And then we can suit up the token. Attack. And I can decide between getting back Torture Tower, kill Etching, or just cast a Reinforcements. Now I might keep Virtuoso as something cheap we can play and suit up. Let's just get another Reinforcement so we don't run out of creatures. And then it's going to be easier to bargain with Torch to Tower. Iconoclast enters. And then I guess we can kill the response here. See if they have a protection spell, which is good to get out of their hand. Monstrous Rage. Alright, it's a lot of damage here. Although we could double block. Yeah, let's just double block Iconoclast, still take some Trample. We're down to 8. But now I get to attack, get back one of my burn spells. And uh, Duelist we could keep on top. A land would also be helpful at potentially letting me play a sword and equip it in the same turn. So maybe I do need Duelist after all. And then I could just torch the etching. And then I don't hate Virtuoso, equip it with a sword. Or get a red-green sword and then hope to top deck an untapped land. So we can play it and suit up Virtuoso. Still have the flexibility of getting Ossification and casting it next turn. Okay, Rampaging Raptor, 4-4, four, four, Trample Haste. It's gonna hit pretty hard. And they seem to have removal left for Virtuoso. Just a Kumano. Okay, so our opponent's tapped out. And we found a land. So if I play Sword, suit up Virtuoso. Then this is hitting for 6, plus another 3. Get back a burn spell. There's a play with fire, so that should be lethal. Get to trigger our sword twice, finding more goodies. And then keep a land on top to exile it with a red-green sword, and that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. We've got a double striker and a sword, but depending on the matchup, I might play the reinforcements first, sword on three, and then turn four with four mana. We can play Virtuoso and equip it, so it's potentially safe from removal. Opponent on potentially red aggro. Okay, in that case, pro blue and pro black is not that useful. Could just play Virtuoso, which... Can maybe trade for a hasty 2-drop, or can still go for reinforcements here. We'll save ossification for something scarier. I think I go for reinforcements. That way if they kill one of the tokens, I can still maybe equip the second one and get immediate value. So our opponent may leave up a burn spell to kill my token in response to me equipping next turn. A lightning strike goes upstairs. Alright, we'll see if they tap out here. Opponent keeps up their mana, and we found Kellen. So that can get the red-green sword, potentially. So I can pay two mana, basically, to force the opponent to kill a token. Which is not a bad thing. And then we'll get the red-green sword. And next turn I could potentially still play and equip it on the existing token. Sure. I'm going to play with Fire Response. Now I could spend two more mana, moving the sword once again. But then if they kill the token, my plan may not work out as well. 
Although they can just use a burn spell on a future turn, I suppose. So maybe I just try to deplete all their burn spells. Sure. And sooner or later we'll connect, get back reinforcements. Alright, that seems to have worked. Don't need to draw another land. Lightning Strike can go to the graveyard. And we'll get back reinforcements. Okay, and then next turn we can maybe get the Red Green Sword. Warcrafting kills the equipped token. They did find a land. Okay, Duelist is excellent. So, maybe step one, equip a token, see if that works. It does. And then now I'm tempted to just play the Duelist as a 3-1, which will give our Lightning Strike a lifelink as we get to connect here. And then these can go to the graveyard. And let's just aim this upstairs. A nice lightning helix, essentially. Bonus at 8. And a Warcrafting now on the Duelist it gets to dig 4 cards deep. Finding a Lightning Strike, which can kill our token here. Although I'll still have one left. Yeah, tokens are good alongside equipment, so you don't run out. Torch also nice answer to Phoenix Chick, as it will exile it. For now I get to cast a free Birthright Boon. Let's see here, a Lightning Strike in Graveyard, Duelist on top, so we can draw it. And then Lightning Strike face. And then we know we're drawing a burn spell to close out the game next turn. So don't want to shuffle my deck. Can just play Virtuoso at 15. I feel safe enough. And Torture Tower can still answer Phoenix Chick or potentially deal 3 damage if we bargain. Feldon's next. And a Kumano. And our opponent explodes, they're dead on board. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems reasonable. Multiple double strike creatures, some removal. And uh, Kellen to get our sword. And what sword are we gonna get? Pro red and pro green. Could also still play Virtuoso first. But sequencing wise, it's better if we can play sword on three, and then play Virtuoso equip on four. Black, green. Alright, so I might still want to get the other sword at some point. So they must have top decked Cottage if they didn't play it turn one. And Underdog is next. Could still see Cut Down on one of my creatures. I think I still try Virtuoso since upside's much higher than Reinforcements. And then ossification potentially a way to clear a path. Shield route we don't mind seeing. Okay, so I think we're actually good to go. Take our draw step. Start with ossification, exiling shield route. And then I could also kill underdog, but the more mana we spend, the less likely we are to get value from Virtuoso, although we do get to trigger it twice here. So I think Lightning Strike is fine. Attack, get to exile four cards, play two extra lanes, haven't played one yet. Land, land, love to see it. Okay. So, can play all the untapped lands, or we can just play Duelist as a 2-1, which is fine here, gives us another creature to equip. And then now we also have double bivouac as creature lanes. So those have awesome synergy with sword, giving us more mana to activate them. And then if they kill Virtuoso, we have some creatures we can suit up. Although do keep in mind, if bivouac equips itself with the sword and it's the only creature, then the ability cannot actually target itself because it will have protection from red and the ability comes from a red creature. So just keep that in mind. 
opponent's got 5 mana. At least Gix's command only kills one creature in the spot since they both have 3 power. So it's going to be Nissa. Could destroy my sword. It's just going to plus making a 4-4. Four, four, which does survive my 3 damage here. So just to play it safe, maybe send Bivouac and the Duelist at Nissa, putting counter on Duelist so it can attack into the 4-4. Four, four. And then Virtuoso has protection from green, so they wouldn't be able to block it with their 4-4. Four, four. And then it's possible we can burn them out here if we exile a few more burn spells. But this way we can at least guarantee killing Nissa, since we can always finish it off with a burn spell. And if they block Bivouac, we can finish off the 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, opponent's trying to block Virtuoso, but pro green means it cannot. So we'll let first strike damage happen, see what we exile. So we can play two more lands, just want to see if we can just burn the opponent out here. And it looks like they've seen enough. Alright, so we got to see our red-white equipment deck in action, and it's very satisfying whenever we actually get to connect with one of our double striking creatures that has a sword on it, and Kellen makes it easy to find the right protection in specific matchups. Now, of course, against white decks, we are a bit vulnerable. I did consider a flying equipment to potentially fly over some of the white creatures, but there's no flying equipment that's particularly effective or efficient that it would want to include. Now, if you do play this deck in best of three, you do potentially gain access to some pretty effective spells that you can then also get back with the Sword of Once and Future. Thinking of the Lithomantic Barrage against white and blue decks can be very effective as just a one mana removal spell. Could also play something like an End of Festivities, which is very helpful against a deck going wide with a bunch of tokens, which tend to be white. So against those white decks, there are still some useful sideboard tools that you could potentially board in if you're interested in playing this in best of three. In best of one, the deck's not going to be particularly competitive, I'm afraid, on the rank ladder, just because it takes so much time and effort to actually suit up one of our creatures, and there's plenty of instant speed removal to punish a strategy like this. But I still had a lot of fun actually playing the deck, so that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.